Okay, we're getting set to do the modification here to um, update the vacuum signal on the Holly 4000 to um, be able to use a distributor from 57 to 64. Basically what we need to do, uh, according to the article, is to go ahead and drill out this plug here and we'll just use a, put a screw in there and tap it and um, pop that out. And then as you can tell, the um, vacuum here, this this port that's sealed off, runs um, right to there. There's a brass uh, plug that screws into there. And of course, this also, this same signal, or I guess the same line, you can see the port, how it runs. It runs over here to the spark control valve uh, that goes into there. And uh, if we were running a Lodomatic distributor, we would leave that just as it is. But since we're not, um, we're going to go ahead and do this modification and we'll do it to both bases so that uh, we can get the vacuum signal correct for a 57 to 64 distributor that has uh, both a vacuum and a mechanical advance. Well, that plug popped right out of there. Um, really no need to uh, tap to pull out the plug. Uh, once the drill caught that, the uh, thing went right out. So uh, this is a quarter inch um, inside diameter hole. And you can see that hole in there that goes over to here. So the big deal now is obviously these chips. You need to get all that out of there and make sure this is super, super clean. We got both of the bases uh, up on stilts. Basically, these are just uh, four inch bolts, extra bolts I had in my stash from um, previous Y block tear down and rebuilt. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, this just pops it up so that the lever stays off uh, the surface you're working on here. Work the butterflies back and forth and gives you access to things. Um, a little bit more easily. Uh, it's just a cheap way to put it up on a pedestal. Um, I do have three prepped. Uh, two of these are prepped um, for a better vacuum signal to uh, upgrade to a 57 to 64 mechanical and vacuum distributor. And then this one here is a pretty nice one as well uh, as far as the base and there's no slop in the butterfly shaft and all of that. I'm going to save this one to do a, a stock rebuild uh, like it would have been in 56 for a Lodomatic. Um, that's the idea with that third base there. I do have three kits actually. I got a kit in here, then I got the other two kits. So we'll be able to put them all together and uh, things are coming along nicely. You can tell when you look at these parts that are very clean, they have been blasted. Uh, and the blast cabinet, the glass bead cabinet, and boy, it makes them very nice. Of course, not everything can be blasted, or do I suggest you blast everything? I don't blast the bases. Um, I don't blast these uh, rods for the accelerator pump. Uh, if you know anything about these, these are vented. And that means that uh, they're hollow. And you can tell there's no way really to clean that out. Um all the way through. Uh, so I don't blast these. I, I clear the wire wheel and all of that. But um, most of the parts, the small parts, you can blast and uh, clean up. Once you do that, I suggest that you use something like this product here called Rush Prevention Magic. Um, it's not cheap. I believe I may have paid 30 bucks just for this little can right here. It may sound like that's pretty expensive, but uh, it does a great job on coating um, any bare metal parts that are clean without any rust. I blast them and then just use a heat gun, another heat source, and heat up your part. I like to string it up with baling wire. And then um, this rust prevention magic will really melt into its, uh, any kind of surface that's been warmed up a little bit. And then you just brush off the excess, let it dry. And it does a real good job in protecting um, that bare metal piece from the elements. Uh, a little bit better than using paint or anything like that. Uh, I really, I really do like 
uh, that product there. So we'll keep working here on all the parts. So basically the parts for four carburetors or the hardware, we'll keep all that stowed in our containers until we're ready to start putting the two together. Once the parts are cleaned, um, and of course uh, blown out with compressed air and all of that, um, we prep them to uh, spray what's called some Carb Renew. Uh, it kind of duplicates the appearance of the plating. It's obviously not plating, but um, it'll bronze up some of these parts that originally looked that way from the factory. Uh, of course, the base and a lot of the pieces, the piece of hardware on a Holley 4000 um, were not plated. So um, the base, of course, that's the uh, part of the carburetor that has the butterflies and so on. But all these other pieces are. Now I've got more here than to do just two, um, but I want to be able to pick the best pieces I can once I get everything assembled. And I'd save the parts uh, in case I build another. So we'll go ahead and get all of these uh, coated with what's called uh, Eastwood's Carb Renew, and I think this is Series 2, this bronze coat. And this, let me reiterate this, this is just going to be a light coat. This isn't a uh, can of spray paint to completely cover the entire piece. Uh, we're just going to give it a dusting almost. Okay, just look at these parts here of hung up for um, one carb at a time. I think I've got three sets to choose from for the dual four setup I'm doing. But anyway, um, just a real light dusting. Uh, when the paint or the coating dries, it looks almost like it's translucent. Um, you can see right there. Of course, that's still a little bit wet on that side. But um, that's really what you want your pieces to look like. Uh, otherwise, it look like just a painted carburetor. So um, anyway, we'll let these dry, then we'll do the, the next round of uh, parts here.